Hello folks, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich. Today's topic is Trump this. Four executive orders were signed into place over the weekend, right? Four orders on Saturday. Let's take a look at those four orders, see which ones are just politics and which ones might have some meaningful impact uh, on the investment world. All right, so the four orders. We have an extension of the federal um, unemployment benefits. Well, sort of. An extension of the payroll tax holiday. Yeah, again, sort of. An extension of the eviction moratorium and an extension on uh, student uh, debt payments. All right, so let's go through each one of those. Let's start at the top. The extension, the proposed extension of the unemployment benefits. Now, remember, this started back in March and it went through July. And it was a $600 payment. Now it's being proposed to be a $400 payment. Okay. So far, it doesn't sound so bad, right? The issue with the $600 is is too many people were actually getting a raise and and there's a disincentive to work. So the $400, right? That doesn't sound too bad. But you're sitting there saying to yourself, hey, fat man, that requires federal funding. That's the responsibility of Congress, not the president. How the hell is he going to do this? How can you do this with executive orders? Well, the answer is you can't, right? What's going on here is a back door. He's taking existing disaster relief money that has been approved by Congress, and we're going to reallocate it, reproportion it. All right, so we're not talking about any new money here. Shit. Right, that makes it a whole lot more headline appealing uh, than it does when you look under, under the covers here, right? This is clearly a case that it is disappointing. Now, let's talk about the, the, the numbers here. $600 going to $400. Part of the $400 is expected to be picked up by the states. 25% of it, right? $100. $100 out of the $400 expected to be picked up by the states. How are they going to pay for it? Well, out of their disaster relief money. That's the idea. The problem is, what happens if you don't have the money? Right? There's a question as to how long this could continue at the national level, the federal level, but then the state's portion is even more critical. So it seems very unlikely uh, that this thing is really going to have much teeth to it at all. All right. So we have a steer rack one here on number one, right? Extending the the unemployment benefits uh, really doesn't, you know, it's a whole lot more smoke and and politics than it is uh, uh, anything meaningful. Let's talk about the payroll tax deduction, right? Number two. Well, the payroll tax has two effects, one on the employer and one on the employee. So the employer pays tax for, you know, Social Security, Medicare, unemployment, and, and, and so forth, right? It's, it's called the FICA tax. All right. So if we give the employer a tax holiday, well, that's good for the businesses, but it's not for the consumer, Right. That money. I never see that money in the first place as an employee. So that's not going to have any effect on me. Maybe a little bit on the uh, businesses themselves. True. True. Maybe a little bit. But but hold on here. Hold on. There's going to be a catch there. But before we get to the catch, let's talk about the other one. So the the payroll tax has has, uh, two implications to the employer and to the employee. Now, the employee also pays in. Uh, uh, tax, uh, the, the, the FICA tax, right? The Social Security and the Medicare tax. So if we give a tax holiday, that's like giving everybody a raise. Shit, fat man, that sounds like a good deal, right? That sounds stimulative. Who's licking the chocolate off your candy bar, man? Get on get on the bandwagon. That's a good thing. Ah, uh, Hold on, hold on. Let's take a look a little closer. The president doesn't have the authority to tax. He doesn't have the authority to tax. So when you talk about a payroll tax holiday, we're talking about tax deferral, right? Tax deferral. So while the employee's paycheck would go up between now and the end of the year, what do you think happens at Christmas? Ebenezer shows up, the Scrooge shows up, and he wants a big freaking payment. Steer rack two, right? Neither one of those seem to make much sense. The, the uh, unemployment benefits of payroll tax. Again, a whole lot more politics can go on here than anything meaningful. Let's go to number three, the eviction moratorium. All right. So 
Uh, we would extend, uh, again, all these programs started in March, ended in July. We would extend um, uh, the eviction moratorium through the end of the year. This actually has some promise to it. Now, it's not stimulative. It's not stimulative, but it may stop the bleeding. There are some estimates that maybe between one, uh, one in five people, right? Maybe as many as 20% of the people are looking at being evicted over the next few months. All right, so this could be meaningful, at least in terms of just stopping the bleeding. Again, not stimulative, but stopping the bleeding. Now, who does this affect? Well, it, it, it essentially affects everybody because you, you have, of course, uh, you know, if you think of all the government housing uh, projects, right, everything has to do with, with HUD and Jenny May and the federal, uh, um, uh, the FHA. All those, of course, would be affected uh, uh, by this moratorium. But also think about all the residential mortgages that you and I have with, with either Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. So if we can't pay our mortgage, the government's not going to evict us. Again, that's, that's uh, we're starting to cook with bacon grease here, right? We're starting to get something, not stimulative, but it's, it's, it's at least moving in the right direction. What was number four here? Let's get number four, the student debt. Okay, again, how I understand this is it's a student debt deferral, right? You would still have to pay off your student debt, but you wouldn't have to make any payments until the end of the year. Okay. All right. So there might be uh, uh, some, some interest exemption, but the principal, as I understand it, again, I could be completely wrong on all these points, but as I understand it, the principal uh, uh, portion of your payment would be delayed to the end of the year. That gives some stimulus, right? to a microcosm of the labor population, right? To a small segment, but it is, it's moving in the right direction, all right? So for the eviction moratorium, we give that a small positive. Again, not stimulative, but might stop the bleeding. The student debt extension, yeah. Again, a small positive. Okay, so the 800 pound gorilla here is not this. It's not this. This, this, uh, uh, exec the executive orders are going to get a lot of fanfare. That's a whole lot of politics, but it's a whole lot of BS, All right? There's not a whole lot of meat to this. There's no substance. For substance, we need Congress. We need to get these packages passed through Congress. Then you'll have something to get excited about. Not, not the executive orders we've seen over the weekend. All right, so that's our message for today. I'm Don Rich, and you just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your beer be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again soon. Thank you.